Yes, Socrates, but how do you mean that we do not learn, but that what we call learning is recollection? If you can somehow show me that these things are as you say, please do so. Well, it is not easy, but I am nevertheless willing to do my best for your sake. Call one of your many attendants of yours, whichever one you like, that I may prove it to you in his case. Certainly. You there! Come forward. Is he Greek? Does he speak Greek? Very much so. He was raised in my house. Pay attention then whether you think he is recollecting or that he is learning from me. I'll pay attention. Now tell me, boy, do you know that a square area is this sort of thing? I do. Then a square area has all these lines being four in number, equal. S certainly. Does it not also have these lines here through the middle of each side of this square equal? Yes. Then. Could not this sort of area be larger or smaller? Certainly. If then this side were two feet and this other side two feet, how many feet would the hole be? Look at it this way. If this side were two feet and this other side only one foot, would not the area be once times two feet? Yes. But as this other side is also two feet, does it not become twice two? It does. Therefore, it becomes two times two feet. Yes. How many, then, are the, are the two times two feet? After you have calculated it, tell me. Four, Socrates. Then could there not be another area two times as large as this one, and of the same sort, having all its lines equal, just as this one? Yes. How many feet, then, will it be? Eight. Come then, try to tell me how large each line of that area will be. For the line of this one is two feet. What then is the line of that area two times as large? It is clear, Socrates, that the line is two times as large. Do you see, Mino, that I am not teaching him anything, but all that I do is ask questions. And now he supposes that he knows what sort of line it is from which an eight-foot area will come to be. Or does it not seem so to you? It does to me. Does he know then? Surely not. For he supposes that it comes from the double line. Yeah. Watch him now recollecting in order just as one should recollect. And you, boy, tell me, do you affirm that from the double line the double area comes to be? I mean this sort of thing. Let it be an area that is not long on this side and short on the other, but equal on every side, just like this one here, and double of this area, that is, an eight-foot area. But see if it still seems to you that it will be that from the double line. It does to me. Then does this line become double of that if we add another of the same length here? Certainly. From this line, then, you affirm there will be an eight-foot area whenever four lines of that length come to be. Yes. But then let us fill out the drawing from this line with four equal lines. Then would not this one here be what you affirm is the eight-foot area? Certainly. Then in this one here there are four areas, each of which is equal to this four-foot area. Yes. How many, then, does it become? Is it not four times as great? How not? Then is the area which is four times as great a double area? No, by Zeus. But how many times as much is it? Four times as much. Therefore, boy, from the double line, not the double area, but the fourfold area comes into being. You speak the truth. For four times an area of four feet is sixteen feet, isn't it? Yes. And from what sort of line does the eight-foot area come to be? Doesn't the fourfold area come to be from this line? I say so. And the four-foot area came to be from this half line right here? Yes. Very well. Is not the eight-foot area double of this one and half of that one? 
will it not be from a line greater than this one, but less than this one here? Or not? It, it seems so to me. Fine, keep answering this very thing, what seems so to you. And tell me, is not this line, as we said, two feet? And that line four? Yes. It must be, therefore, that the line of the eight-foot area is greater than this two-foot line, but less than the four-foot line. It must. Now try to say what size you affirm it to be. Three feet. Then, if this is to be three feet, let us take of this line one half in addition, and it will be three feet. For the foot of this one is two, and that of the other is one. And the same way here, these are two, and the other is one. And this area of which you spoke comes into being. Yes. Then whenever it is three feet this way, and three feet that way, does the whole area become three times three feet? It appears so. And how many feet are three times three? Nine. And how many feet was the required double area to be? Uh, eight. Therefore, in no way does the eight-foot area come to be from the three-foot line. Surely not. But from what sort of line? Try to tell us precisely, and if you don't want to count, show us, rather, from what sort of line. But, but by Zeus, Socrates, I, for one, do not know. Are you considering again, Mino, how far it is that he has now gone in this recollecting? That at first he did not know what the line of the eight-foot area is, just as now he does not know. But however that may be, then he thought he knew, and boldly answered as one who knows. And he did not believe that he was unprovided and perplexed. But now, at this time, he believes that he is unprovided and perplexed. And just as he does not know, he does not think that he knows. You speak the truth. Then is he not better off now about the thing which he did not know? This too seems to me so. Then, by making him unprovided and perplexed and numbing him, just like the torpedo fish, have we in any way harmed him? It doesn't seem so to me. Then at any rate, we have done something useful for the work at hand, as is fitting for discovering how things are. It seems likely. Well, do you think that before he would have tried to seek for or to learn that which he thought he knew while he did not know, before he fell down into perplexity and want and came to believe that he did not know and longed to know? It does not seem so to me, Socrates. Did he benefit then from being numbed? It seems so to me. Look now at what he will discover from this perplexity and want, searching along with me while I do nothing but ask questions and do not teach. For you, boy, tell me, is not this our four-foot area? Do you understand? I do. And can we not add here another area equal to it? Yes. And this third one equal to each of these? Yes. And can we add this one in the corner so as to fill it out? Certainly. Then, would it not come about there are these four equal areas? Yes. What then? How many times more does this whole area become from that one? Four times. But what we needed was the double area, or don't you remember? I certainly do. Is this not, then, a line going from corner to corner and cutting each of these areas in two? Yes. Then do not these four equal lines come about containing this area here? They sure do. Look now, what size is this area? I, I don't understand. Has not each of these inside lines cut off half of each of these four areas? Or not? Yes. Then how many areas of this size are there in this area? Four. And how many in this area here? Two. And what is the relation of four to the two? Double. Then how many feet does this area become? Eight. From what kind of line? From this one. From the one stretching from corner to corner of the four foot area? Yes. The sophists call this line the diagonal, 
So that, if the diagonal is its name, it would be from the diagonal, as you, Mino's boy, declare, that the double area would come to be. By all means, Socrates. What does it seem to you, Mino? Is there any opinion which he gave in his answers that was not his own? No, they were all his own. And yet he did not know, as we were saying a little while ago. You speak the truth. Still, these opinions were in him, were they not? Yes. Then in someone who does not know about that which he does not know, there are true opinions about those things which he does not know. So it appears. <laughs>